of empire casting a bit of a shadow over the meeting, a growing row as Caribbean diplomats condemned Downing Street's refusal to discuss the treatment of the so-called Windrush generation. Uh, these are long-term Commonwealth-born UK residents uh, who are being denied full immigration status and indeed some uh, face deportation. Well, with me is uh, the Barbados High Commissioner to the UK, uh, Guy Hewitt. Mr. Hewitt, thank you very much Good indeed morning, Annie. Uh, for joining us. I understand that there was a request to debate this or put this on the formal agenda of uh, the Chogham meeting, and that's been rejected. Is that right? Well, if I can just give context. First of all, to say that we are looking forward. The Commonwealth, the heads of government, are excited by the opportunity of convening in London later on this week. Um, as a matter of, of process, uh, the, the host usually has opportunities to have bilaterals and meetings with her counterparts from around the Commonwealth. And we were hoping that there would be the opportunity for the Commonwealth Caribbean heads of government to meet with Prime Minister May. Regrettably, we were advised that her schedule is full but we are still hoping that if there is a space created or space becomes available, that she will be able to meet not only to discuss the matter of the Winrush kids, but other matters of mutual concern and importance. Now, let's see who, who we're talking about here. These are people who came to Britain in the 60s and 70s. Oh, 50s, 60s and 50s, 70s. 50s and 70s yeah. from the Caribbean. Yes. They, they were children. Many of them would have come as children. And they're now it. obviously in their 50s and 60s. That's right. And they're suddenly being told after a lifetime working, living here, having children, uh, that they don't have the right to remain. That sounds incredible. What has happened is that the Home Office tightened up its rules on residence. Its check residence checks became a lot more robust since 2012. These persons came, many of them, as children from countries that were colonies. So they came as British subjects or citizens of the UK and colonies. So they felt when they arrived that they were already British subjects, British citizens, and they never felt the need to go about regularizing their status or even looking into it. They went to school, they got jobs, they paid their taxes, they raised families. So what they are finding in their twilight years to be confronted by this demand as seeming ludicrous, and what we are asking the Home Office to do is have some compassion and let us work towards a solution that is mutually beneficial. I mean, these are people in some cases who are now being sacked effectively because they don't yes, have the right they've been papers. Shut out. They've been shut out of the system. They or, can't or not work. getting access to the NHS. They can't work, they can't access the NHS, they can't get benefits, and because of the new clampdown, some of them have been evicted from, from homes because landlords don't want to take the chance of being penalized, bank accounts have been closed down. They, they are finding themselves virtually abandoned and destitute by a country that they've given their life to. How many people came from Barbados do you think were affected by this? We don't know the statistics um, of the persons from Barbados. Um, the Migration Observatory at Oxford University says there are about 50,000 in total from the Commonwealth who find themselves in this predicament. We have been seeing increasing numbers at our mission. The other Caribbean High Commissions are reporting similar things. And my argument is, one is one too many. I mean, they're being asked to prove that they've been in the country consistently since, since, since they came. How, how could this be sorted out, do you think? What we are asking, as I said, is for the Home Office to use compassion and also the information at their disposal. The UK government would have NHS records, it would have HMRC data, it would have national insurance records that if it accesses it, it would be able to demonstrate on on every given person when and how long. I mean, at the moment here. they're being told get a lawyer. And the moment they're being told get a lawyer, do it yourself. And the problem is, the new changes in legal aid means they can't even approach legal aid. They've got to find two thousand pounds themselves. And, and what about uh, the status of their children? For the children who were born here and grandchildren, they are regularized. But if you can imagine the devastation to a family, for a parent or a grandparent to be told you've got to leave. Or in the case of Albert Thompson, you can't access Kant's life-saving treatment. Or for some of them who are still in detention, 
that all of a sudden you're deemed to be some kind of criminal. I mean, it, do we know if some people have actually been removed here? Yeah. We know that. We know people have been deported. That's that's without question. I think what has happened, the reports that some of the ministers at Home Office are getting may not be completely correct. Okay, High Commissioner, thank you very much. Thank we go you. now live to Theresa May speaking in the Guildhall uh, at uh, that.